Rust is a language I've had my eyes on for about a year, and it's finally time to try it out. In this video, I'll talk about my experience taking the first steps in learning Rust. My ultimate goal is to be able to make games with it, but I'll probably make other things with it as well. This is not a tutorial, it's just gonna be me in my basement sharing my adventures of learning Rust. So I was recently up north in Sweden by the mountains, and there I didn't have my stationary computer. But I had this potato computer. Eh, it will do. So I had no reason not to try Rust out. Getting started with Rust was easier than I thought considering how new the language is. Not only are there a decent amount of YouTube videos on Rust, but Rust has an amazing community surrounding it. According to Stack Overflow, Rust has been the most loved language four years in a row. Let's see what the fuss is about. Everyone tackles the learning process differently. I'm gonna share with you how I'm doing it. After learning the basics, you know, doing the hello world and a guessing game, I decided to try to make a basic text-based strategy game. Not an adventure game, a strategy game. I decided I'm not gonna follow any tutorial, instead I'm gonna search on GitHub for repositories that I could gather ideas from. I implemented a way to get the user inputs, and after that, my monkey programmer brain started thinking it would be a good idea to expand the scope of this project, even though it wasn't even a playable game yet, but yeah. I started going down the rabbit hole of implementing language processing functionality. I think that's what you call it. I basically wanted a way for the game to be able to understand commands such as all warriors gather herbs, or two resting peasants drop ten gold. Or maybe even a more verbose version like Will the peasant please attack any sleeping pig? Yeah, overscoping is my biggest enemy right now. Anyway, I'm back home now and I realized that I really want to learn some more Rust before I continue with this language processing functionality for the strategy game. So I decided to tackle a new project, following a tutorial. This tutorial is a great place to start learning Rust if you want to make games. They introduce parts of the language as you go on, and in the end, you'll have a good understanding of the building blocks of a roguelike. Currently, I've only made it through the first four parts, but just look at this. This was not hard to put together. If I were to make this in C++, then I would probably spend half the time just getting the libraries up and running. But with Rust, it literally takes me about five seconds to add a new library to the project. Everything code-wise has been very clear and predictable so far. I was suspecting I would have a harder time managing ownership, but nothing has been too hard yet. I haven't learned how lifetimes work yet, but just quickly looking at it, it looks a bit intimidating, but it will probably be easy. Right guys? Okay guys, let's spice things up a bit. I thought I would build a tool that is actually useful for me. Well, I'm gonna rewrite the tool I made previously using C++. Nothing too fancy snancy, all it does is to rename files. This tool was useful for me when I was making sprite sheets for a Meeple Story fan game that I made previously on this channel. This is how it works. For every file in the working folder, it will find all of the PNG files that contains a number in the file name. Then the program renames the file based on the numbers. These names are fetched from a JSON file. So let's rewrite it in Rust and compare the Rust version to the C++ version. Who shall prevail? We'll see. I'm gonna screen capture the whole process, so I'm gonna need to drink a lot of coffee. Most Rust projects start with Cargo New, and I'm already checking up on documentation so that I don't mess up the naming convention of my project name. Now I did end up writing two different versions. The reason being, the first version I made, it was bad, okay? I made a second version in order to see what this program could look like when Rust is at its best. Sometimes I did struggle with the ownership rules of Rust. Anyway, it took me a total of 3 hours to make, and here is the first version. 158 lines of code and oh my! What is this? Path as path, file name, unwrap, to string, unwrap. <laughs> is it only me or are we unwrapping a tangled together Christmas present? Okay, so here is the part of the language that some people might be really annoyed with, especially if you're new to programming. The language forces you to deal with potential failures. You have to write code that will never cause undefined behavior or worse random crashes. Rust will tell you, hey, you have a potential error here, I won't let you compile unless you specifically tell me how a potential error should be handled. 
Let's dissect this line of code to see why we are wrapping up presents like a madman. Okay, so we have a vector of path buffs. A path buff is just like a string, but with some extra functionality. The path buff represents a path to a file or a directory. Now we want to remove files that does not contain a number. So let's filter each item in the vector by checking if it has a number. This doesn't compile because the has number function takes a string, not a path buff. But before we fix that, we are checking the whole path for a number. Let's only check the file name. The file name function returns an option of an OS string reference. It is not guaranteed that the path buff has a file name. That's why it returns it optionally. Now we need to handle the case where it doesn't return a file name. And we are currently doing that by unwrapping the option. The unwrap function will crash the program if it doesn't get a file name. And it will return the OS string if it succeeds to getting the file name. Now I'm making a conscious choice as a programmer here. I tell Rust it is okay to crash here. Let's continue. The has number function needs a string, but I have an OS string now. Luckily OS string can be converted to a regular string with the to string function. Great! Now we have the file name as a string. And now the has number function will work. Or will it? No! What? The to string function is not guaranteed to always return a string. Because there's a chance that the OS string does not have valid Unicode. And in that case it can't be converted to a string. So this also returns an option. So I unwrap the option with the unwrap function and I get the string. Or if it fails it will crash the program. Rust forces you to deal with a potential problem. And the way I decide to do it here is to predictably crash the program. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this yet. It's neither here or there, but it sounds like a good idea. Let's stop ranting about Rust and compare the C++ version to the shiny new Rust version. On the left side is the C++ code and on the right side is the Rust code. Let's do a recap on what the program does, but let's look at Rust at the same time to visualize what happens. First we ask the user what the first name should be. And then we load the JSON file that lets us map a number to an additional name. Let's find all of the files in the current directory and we're gonna start by filtering out the files that doesn't contain a PNG extension. After that we filter out names without a number in the file name. Now that we have the files we want, we can do some string manipulation to get the final name of the file. And in the end, we rename the file. I love that Rust includes declarative programming functionality into the language. It makes for very straightforward code. Let's compare this part to C++. Now nothing is wrong with this code. Well, you tell me. But the way I do it in C++ is that I have to filter out the files I don't want inside of the loop. Now I could separate out the filtering part into functions and then just iterate the items after filtering the vector. Let's compare how we manage the JSON file. This is basically everything in the Rust part. I define the data and similar to reflection in C Sharp, Serdi, the JSON library I'm using, has a macro that automatically makes it possible to serialize and deserialize this data. In the C++ version, I had to specifically check for every single thing in the JSON document. All of this code versus all of this code. I really like Rust because it's so easy to find libraries that makes your life much easier. Serdi is very nice. Anyway, comparing these codes directly to each other might be pointless. If it works, it works. And some people might prefer the C++ version over the Rust version, and that's fine. You should use the thing that brings you the most joy. If I decided to make a similar program in the future, I would choose Rust over C++, because I find Rust to be easier to set up, to add libraries, and the standard template library has very nice features in Rust. So this has been my first look into Rust. I made a game, I made a tool, I am pleased with Rust so far and I will probably make more videos about it in the future. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Leave a like and comment if you want to support my work. I will go drink my coffee now. Tantan out!